Hi, welcome back to Missing Chemistry. This is the element fluorinium, Fl. All right, fluorinium happens to be element number 114. So since it's element number 114, it has 114 protons. And the element is going to be electrically neutral, so it has to have 111 electrons to cancel out the 114 protons. So what are the number of neutrons in fluorinium? Well, fluorinium has an approximate atomic mass of 298. So remember that it's the number, it's the atomic mass unit, number of them, minus the number of protons equals the number of neutrons. So you're going to go 298 minus 114 equals 175 neutrons. So we have 175 neutrons. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit. And we're going to do our electron configurations next. Okay, so remember that when you do electron configurations, the S subshell can hold two electrons, the P subshell can hold a total of six electrons, the D subshell can hold a total of 10 electrons, and the F subshell can hold a total of 14 electrons. So we're going to use the off ball principle, which says you fill the lower shells first before you fill the upper shells, right? Then we're going to use the diagonal rule. We're going to start at the top of the slide right here, as I call it. And we're going to go down these arrows until we run out of electrons. And we have 114 to do. So we go 1s2. So we're going to put the 2 there. We go to this slide next right here. And then we go down to 2s2 and add 2 electrons. They come back to the top of the slide right here. And you go down to 2p6. Use up 6 electrons there. And then 3s2. Pretty darn easy, huh? So you come back to the top of the slide again, you go down to 3p6, and then 4s2. Then we come back to the top of the slide again, and we go to 3d10. Then we go to 4p6. Then we go to 5s2. Come back to the top of the slide again, and then we go down to 4d10. 5p6, and then 6s2. Then we go back to the top of the slide, 4f14, 5d10, 6p6, and finally we go to, uh, let's see here, 7s2. And then we go to 5F14. Let's make that 14 a little bit better. Sorry about that. Then 6D10. And finally, 7P2. We add all these electrons up, you get 114. All right, the next electron configuration we do is going to something called orbital notation. Now, orbital notation uses Hund's rule, which says that for, in each suborbit, like an S, a P, a D, or an F, you have to put an up arrow first in that suborbit completely for every one of those suborbits until you can put the down arrow. So watch this. Up and then down, see that? That suborbit is complete. 2s, up and down, that suborbit is complete. Now watch this, 2px, 2py, 2pz. So you go up, 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 and you go down, down, down. And that's classic kind of rule right there. So you go up, 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 and then down, down, down to complete the suborbit. And that's what Hans rule meant by saying you have to put an up arrow in every suborbit before you put the down arrow in every suborbit. What does the up arrow represent? It represents a clockwise rotating electron, whereas the down arrow represents a counterclockwise rotating electron. So let's go ahead and just fill in the rest here. This will take a few minutes because there are quite a few arrows that we have to draw.
And as you can see, as we're filling these errors, it has a predictable repeating pattern. Look at the four Ds. One, two, three, four, and five. See, they're all going up. Now we do the down errors. And why are they going opposite arrows? Because to put two electrons in the same common area, you have to spin them oppositely or they are going to reject each other. So here come the four Fs. And then we go down arrows. See that? And now our five Ds. There are five Fs. All right, so we're just going to fill these in for a while here. Sixties. And now finally our seven P's. Seven P X, seven P Y. Do we need to put that seven P Z in there? Yes, you do, because it's a part of the suborbit. All right, now the noble gas notation. So you have to find the nearest noble gas to fluorine. Now you can't use the one after it, so you have to use the one before it, which would be, of course, radon, Rn. So, radon's uh, configuration, of course, will end in 6p6. So, what we have is... So we're going to go here and we're going to take all of this up right here. Just like that. And the purpose of noble gas notation is to kind of like shorthand or make it easier to write. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write it in order. Some people like to put it as 7s2, 5s14, 6d10, 7 d 2 but technically that's not correct. You really should put them in uh, order of like numerical order. So it'd be 5, F, 14, 6, D, 10, 7, S, 2, and then finally 7, P, 2. Now, polysclusionary principle says that no two elements can have the same set of quantum numbers. So each element has its own unique set of quantum numbers. All right, so when we look at the periodic table, it happens to be in the seventh energy level. So our n value, our principal quantum number is seven. <clears throat> it happens to be in the p block, so our l value is going to be one, okay? And it happens to be the second element in the P block, so you go negative one, zero, so it's gonna have a zero for our M value. And let's look at our last arrow. Our last arrow there is going up. So that tells me it's going to be one half positive. And that's its set of unique quantum numbers, okay? Well, that's it. If you like this video, give us a like and consider subscribing so we can grow this channel. You guys be snarly, and we'll see you back here at Moosin Chemistry.